in the continuation of previous lectures today we will discuss a very important property of the fluids which is viscosity so in today's uh, discussion we will cover viscosity also what are the uh, causes due to which viscosity induce so you can say physical cause of viscosity third we will cover newton's laws of viscosity after that uh, we will cover the uh, uh, what are the various kind of fluids based upon the uh, newton's law of viscosity that is your uh, newtonian fluid and non newtonian fluid after covering all such aspects we will also cover the effect of the temperature effect of the temperature as well as pressure on the viscosity of the fluids so let's start our first discussion that is viscosity as we are already aware that that the liquids and gases these are classified as fluids because whenever any shear force or tangential force is applied they continuously deform or flow so that's why they are called as the fluids so the liquids and gases show this kind of nature that's why categorized into the fluids so we can sum up that uh, fluids uh, are uh, whenever subjected to the shear or tangential forces they continuously deform or flow now if we try to uh, provide a graphical representation of this kind of flow this will look like this one where a fixed surface is available over which some fluid is there and on the top of this fluid surface a thin plate thin plate having very low weight very low weight as well as this is wide enough so you can say very wider whenever this force f is applied on this plate this plate wants to drag the liquid particles just below it along with the plate and that's how if we try to see the deformation of the liquid in the layered form this kind of nature will be shown where this layer is trying to go along with the plate however a layer which is just below above this one is also being dragged by this upper layer to go along this one and that's how this deforms and takes a shape like this one and this process continues downwards where the upper layer is trying to drag the lower liquid layer along with the flow however at the bottom this liquid surface which is contact in the fixed surface wants to stay on its original position that is at stationary so all the molecules which are in the contact of the fixed base will be at the stationary position so if you look at this particular behavior where this kind of deformation will be shown by the fluids due to the applied force on the top surface uh, if you look uh, the these two uh, take these two layers this layer wants to drag the lower layer in the in the forward direction however the lower layer wants to drag the upper layer in the backward direction or you can say it wants to pull back the upper layer in the uh, backward direction so there is a resistance against this kind of flow happens and whenever this kind of property is being possessed by any kind of fluid where the resistance to the flow is generated this is called the viscosity so we can sum up this the definition of viscosity as the property of a fluid that is used to measure this resistance of the flow is called as the viscosity in other words we can also uh, say that viscosity is a resistance to flow so if we 
say this thing in a layman language that is a resistance to flow so you can say that higher the viscosity of fluid will show you the higher resistance against the flow let's uh, try to understand this particular aspect by with a common example let's take two vessels or two fluids uh, one vessel or one fluid you can say that is water that is water and in another uh, box you are carrying some honey and if you apply the same force on both the liquid suppose say this force is f this force is f so this is your water and this is your honey so you will observe that that deformation if occurs in the water let's say deformation is dsw in the case of water and deformation in the honey is ds h with the application of f force in each then d s of w will be greater than d s of h that is honey it shows that the resistance caused by the honey is very high and that shows that honey is having higher viscosity than water so depending upon the type of the fluid the viscosity will also change so viscosity is a very important property in the fluid mechanics so it becomes very necessary to understand the effect of the uh, viscosity on any problem related to the fluid mechanics because when viscosity will cause internal friction within the fluid and due to this internal friction there will be a energy loss within the system and this energy loss must be accounted for designing of the any infrastructure related to the fluid if we are studying any problem related to the aerodynamics where we are designing the vehicles at a high speed vehicles moves through the air and this air applies very much higher drag on this vehicle so for the stability purpose for the speed of the vehicle the assessment of the viscosity and its effect must be taken care into account for the civil engineering applications if you talk about so whenever any kind of uh, pipe flow or channel flow there the consideration of viscosity becomes very important for the chemical engineers sim similarly for the any chemical plant understanding of the viscosity and their behavior with the pipe flow is becomes very important so with reference to discussion we can summarize this discussion as follows that this causes the friction within the fluid and which occurs the energy loss and that must be taken into account into the designing the any vacuum fluid pipe system or you can say chemical plant related activities now we will move for the our next point of the discussion that is the physical cause of the viscosity in order to understand the physical cause of viscosity we are considering the flow of the liquid in the layered form so here a figure is shown over there where a liquid is flowing and the consideration of two two layers are shown where one is the upper layer and second is the your lower layer so in the upper layer the all the molecules are moving at a faster speed compared to the lower layer so whenever any molecule which is near the interface of the upper and lower layer tries to move into the arena of the uh, lower layer it collides with the particles which are available in the lower layer let's take any molecule in the upper layer such that this one and call it as a and any molecule in the lower layer such that it's called as b so any molecule which is near to the interface of the upper and lower layer tries to migrate into the another's arena so when part molecule a reaches in this zone and gets collide with any other molecule in this layer suppose this that is b so due to this collision a wants to drag the particle b along this side because molecule a is moving at a faster speed and molecule b is moving at a slower speed so a wants to 
drag the particle b along with this one however b wants to drag the particle a at a lower speed so similarly if any particle b goes in this location where it collides with any other particle so uh, this particle b wants that particle a should move at a lower speed so it wants to retard its original speed so due to this momentum exchange energy loss happens and this this energy loss on the grand scale causes the resistance or viscosity and that that is the reason behind the viscosity that is uh, inherent property of the fluid now let's move to our uh, next discussion that is the newton's law of viscosity this is a fixed surface uh, and above this some fluid is over there and plate a white plate a white plate is placed on the top surface of the fluid and applied a force of f note that down that f is very small also for the plate this plate is very thin as well as very wide then this uh, newton's law of viscosity uh, i mean derivation of the newton's law of viscosity will be uh, easy to derive so when the uh, very small force f is applied this plate starts moving with some acceleration however the fluids which are just below the plates drag the plate in the opposite direction so with this uh, retardation after some time this plate moves at a uniform velocity let's say that uniform velocity that is u this situation occurs when equilibrium occurs and plate moves at a uniform velocity in such condition what happens if you look at the fluid layers this uh, any particular layer will take this shape where the upper layer is dragging it forward however the lower layer is dragging forward and a shape look like this one takes the shape like this one which is shown over here the shape which is shown over here will take this particular shape due to the resistance of the flow the another important point is the uh, consideration of uh, no slip condition so before the uh, reaching that point we need to understand what is the no slip condition the fluids which are in the contact of the plate will move at a same speed at which the plate is moving so this will move at a speed of u if your plate is moving at a speed of u however the fluid molecules which are just next to the uh, our fixed surface will have a velocity of zero that you can say these fluid particles are stationary so if you move along this depth the particles which are close to the fixed base have zero velocity however the fluids at the top of the fluid layer will have the maximum velocity that is u and a uh, velocity distribution along this depth will happen now the conditions at this location uh, where the fluid particles are not slipping all the particles close to the plate are moving at the speed of the plate and similarly all the fluid particles close to the fixed base are at the stationary and this situation is called as no slip condition so no slip conditions are arriving at two position position one and position two so with the consideration of this if one moves along upwards a velocity distribution along the depth of this fluid will occur and that will look like this one where the fluid velocity at the fixed base is zero and the fluid's velocity at the top is maximum that is your u here that is zero 
and in between the velocity of fluids is changing this way so if we talk about any point at this location this is the velocity of the fluid particles at this location if we talk about this point the fluid velocity is this much this color change uh, will make you more clear about the previous discussion so the kind of motion we are just discussed is happening because the shear stress is generated within this fluid due to a moving plate on the top so in this fluid if we take any element within this fluid element this fluid element is subjected to a force such that suppose this force is having a magnitude of delta f so here the delta f will also working and we are considering that this area is your delta a so this will cause a generation of shear stress which we can write as shear stress generated that will be uh, you can write this thing as a tau tau is equal to uh, delta f divided by delta a where in the terms of limit we can say delta a is tending to zero so in differential format we can write that df by da now due to this shear stress a shear strain will be produced in the fluid so let's take any fluid element within the fluid is subjected to a shear stress of tau so at the top and similarly if it is in equilibrium the same shear stress will be working as the tau at the bottom so due to this application of the shear stress a shear strain will be generated in the fluid element and due to this the deformation of shape of this particular element look like this one the figure which is shown on the right so if we take if we want to figure out what is the deformation produced so we can draw a vertical line now from its original position this has moved this much so let's take the height of element that is your delta y delta y and the forward movement of the uh, fluid particle from its position is delta x that is delta x now if you can see this this angle which has been rotated from the but earlier it was uh, 90 degree now it has moved to this position so this is due to the shear strain and let's say this angle is delta alpha now or more precisely better it would be it that you measure like this way that is delta alpha and let's consider that the this particular shape is when it is taking a shape of parallelogram this overall process takes a time of delta t so if your angle that uh, the shear strain delta alpha is very small we can write that delta alpha is equal to tan delta alpha now if you want to uh, address the value of the delta alpha from the geometry so you can see that this is your delta alpha so delta alpha you can also write that delta alpha is equal to delta x divided by delta y so the shear strain you observed over here can be written in this term so uh, now this is there is a very important point that we have to uh, note here so if this would have been a solid this angle would have been hold at this position corresponding to load but this was a fluid elements th that's why it's continue to deform because of the application of a shear stress and that is the important consideration that we have to take care in the fluid mechanics 
Now another important point is that not only the shear strain, we have to also understand the rate of the shear strain. Where that how much strain has been produced that is your delta alpha and how much time it has taken. So this you can call as the rate of the shear strain. Now if you look at the velocity profile of any element you can see that element which is in the consideration is this one where the top layer is moving at a speed of u plus delta u however the bottom layer is moving at a speed of u so if we uh, talk about the relative speed or relative velocity so you can say that upper layer is moving at a speed of u plus delta u minus u that is your delta u so at a speed of delta u with respect to the lower layer so in view of above if we uh, look at this position where this is moving at the speed of u plus delta u and this is moving at a speed of u so the upper layer has moved at a faster speed of delta u and now if it has taken a delta t time so we can say that delta x is equal to delta u multiplied by delta t as uh, we have got from the uh, previous discussion or discussion just we made our above there that delta x is delta u into delta t now let's say this is equation one equation Two. Now we have to figure out the uh, rate of shear strain in terms of the uh, parameters which are available to us. So this uh, we can route that uh, rate of shear strain that is delta alpha divided by delta t. And if we replace the delta alpha value from the equation one we can write that delta x divided by delta y and delta t now this delta x divided by delta t if you see this thing delta x divided by delta t so you can write this delta x divided by delta t as a delta u so we can rewrite this particular equation as delta u divided by delta y so that delta alpha divided by delta t is this one and if we want to write uh, rewrite the same thing in the limit term we can write that d alpha over dt can be written as du by dy now uh, if you look at the term on the right side this is a velocity gradient this velocity gradient can be understand as a assessment of the change of the velocity along the depth so it is that at what rate the velocity of the fluid flow is changed along the depth is being shown by the du by dy so you can correlate this uh, expression that rate of shear strain rate of shear strain is your velocity gradient in the 17th century <coughs> isaac uh, newton has given the uh, newton's law of viscosity which says that uh, shear stress in a fluid is directly proportional to uh, its shear strain uh, rate or velocity gradient so the statement of the uh, newton's law of viscosity can be written as so the statement of uh, newton's law of viscosity says that shear stress in a fluid is directly proportional to the shear strain rate or uh, velocity gradient and uh, the same thing can be written as that uh, shear stress that is tau is equal to mu times of 
डी यू ओवर डी वाई वेयर म्यू इज द प्रपोर्शनल कॉन्स्टेंट सो यू कैन से दैट इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ प्रपोर्शन प्रपोर्शनलिटी सो म्यू इज कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ प्रपोर्शनैलिटी टी एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज एब्सलूट और डायनमिक विस्कॉसिटी सो योर म्यू इज डायनमिक विस्कॉसिटी और यू कैन से एब्सलूट विस्कॉसिटी so let's figure out the uh, unit of the viscosity so using this equation we can figure out easily what is the uh, unit of viscosity that is mu is equal mu times of du by dy so shear stress is your newton per meter square is equal to mu that is unknown multiplied by that is uh, velocity so meter per second divided by this is your meter so the this will be so this will look like this one and the si unit of mu will be newton per meter square into seconds so you can say that this is newton second meter square is the si unit of the viscosity so let's move to our uh, next this discussion that is the types of fluids that is based upon the uh, whether they are following the uh, newton's law of the viscosity or not so any liquid that is following the uh, newton's law of viscosity will be called as newtonian fluids and those which are not following the newton's law of viscosity is called as non newtonian fluids so what does exactly that means is that any fluid that maintains the same viscosity between the applied shear stress and velocity gradient will be called as newtonian fluid so we can write it as if we want to uh, draw the uh, newton's law of viscosity on a graphical scale so let's say this x axis is showing your velocity gradient that is your du over dy and y axis is showing the shear stress that is your tau and let's take a uh, few uh, liquids and by that we will show the uh, a relative uh, idea of their viscosity so we have drawn the uh, five different lines and this if if we are assuming that this is showing the viscosity of air so air uh, uh, above that we can take any other liquid that is gasoline gasoline has higher viscosity than air and above than gasoline water has a higher viscosity and similarly mercury has a higher viscosity than uh, water and similarly crude oil has higher crude oil has higher viscosity compared to the mercury now there is an important point if you look at all the figures which are shown over there that if you find out what is the slope of these lines once you are moving from air to crude oil you will observe that as you are moving upwards that the slope of all these lines are keep on increasing when you are moving from air to crude oil so higher the slope of the line that means higher is the viscosity so if you face any problem or any question where the graphical representation is over there and you have to distinguish that uh, between the uh, viscosity of two liquids so higher the slope and higher will be the viscosity and by noting down this fundamental you can quickly figure out the any problem 
that you have to solve now uh, let's move to the another discussion that is non newtonian fluids so uh, fluids whose uh, very thin layers exhibit a uh, non linear behavior between the applied shear stress and shear strain rate are classified as a non newtonian fluid so there all the uh, liquids which are following the newton's law and newton's law is based upon the proportionality between the applied shear stress and the velocity gradient and similarly if a non linear relationship is existing between the shear stress as uh, and velocity gradient for any liquid that will be categorized into the non newtonian so the statement we can write for the non newtonian fluid so the overall discussion which we just made can be uh, uh, shown in this uh, figure here the y axis this uh, shear stress is shown on the x axis uh, the uh, uh, velocity gradient or you can say shear strain rate is shown and newtonian fluids are following a, a pattern of a straight line however all the fluids above showing a this kind of pattern or this kind of pattern will be characterized into a non newtonian fluids so basically they are uh, two types one is uh, pseudo plastic fluids and second is your dilatant fluids so for the dilatant fluid if you see as you as you keep on moving the uh, higher velocity gradient or you can say higher shear strain rate the slope of the line keep on increasing that means that if suppose that mu1 is the apparent viscosity at this location and mu2 is the apparent viscosity at this location so mu2 is higher than mu1 that means as the uh, shear strain rate rate is increasing the apparent viscosity is also is increasing for such kind of uh, fluids which are following this trend will be called as the dilatant fluids so you can say these are the thickening fluids so these you can say shear thickening for an example of such kind of fluids a mixture of uh, high concentration of sugar high concentration of sugar of sugar and water will fall into this category so as you keeps on moving the shear strain rate the uh, apparent viscosity of this kind of uh, mixture will keep on increasing and this will be as we have as a dilatant fluid uh, many fluids are over there which will be showing an opposite behavior we just discussed and this uh, this will be categorized into the pseudo plastic uh, fluid where if you keep on increasing the uh, shear strain rate the apparent viscosity will keep on reducing you can see the the viscosity if you talk mu1 is over here mu2 is over there mu3 mu4 and mu5 so it is such that that mu5 is less than mu4 is less than mu3 is less than mu2 is less than mu1 so the viscosity is not constant right now it is now depending upon the shear strain rate so as they are showing an opposite behavior uh, to the dilatant fluid such kind of fluids which are pseudo plastic that is pseudo plastic they are also called as shear thinning liquids or fluids for uh, such type of uh, fluids we can uh, have a similar behavior in case of ketchup you have seen in your houses blood gelatin or milk all all such kind of fluids are fall into the category of pseudo plastic fluids these are the uh, li uh, fluids which flow slowly at uh, at low application of shear stress 
uh, you can see in the case of large slope but rapidly uh, under a higher shear stress a condition of uh, quicksand that uh, you will uh, study in the uh, uh, geotechnical engineering that is quicksand condition that is also this condition is similar to the behavior uh, which is shown by the pseudoplastic so in case of the quicksand uh, it is advised that if anyone falls into it it is best to move very slowly because of a high apparent viscosity at a low uh, shear strain rate however if somebody tries to move very fast this will lose in lose the quicksand condition and that will pull a person downwards because of its low viscosity now uh, there exist uh, special class of substance where the uh, substance is such that which is in both states uh, you can say that is solid as well as liquid state exist at simultaneous time for example apart from the above discussion there exists a special class of substance which will show the solid as well as the fluid properties so uh, this will be called as uh, a substance substance which is having the properties of solids as well as the uh, liquids for example such kind of substance are uh, uh, wet uh, uh, wet cements paste so this will hold the property of solid as well as liquid depending upon the magnitude of the shear stress if we apply the small shear stress on such paste this will hold its original shape and that will behave as solid however if we apply higher magnitude of higher magnitude of shear stress on this particular paste this will start flow like a fluid however this kind of uh, uh, unusual behavior of solid and fluid substances are not studied in the fluid mechanics for for consideration of such kind of uh, material we do have a special field of uh, that is rheology where we try to understand the this kind of behavior of this kind of materials now one more uh, class that we have to discuss is that is in viscid fluids so uh, for the many applications where we are involving the fluids of the low uh, viscosities which are having a very low viscosity uh, such as uh, air and water they are having a very uh, low viscosity this is roughly uh, 10 to the power minus 3 newton second per meter square uh, at 20 degree celsius and uh, for the for the case of the uh, water uh, this one is this one uh, in case of air this value is 10 to the power minus 6 newton into second per meter square at 20 degrees celsius so at at this temperature we can think of that uh, this viscosity values can be neglected for many engineering application and and by definition we can say that uh, any fluid which has a zero viscosity will be called as the uh, inviscid fluid so if you can see uh, on this figure the inviscid fluid is being shown on this line so this uh, fluid is that uh, such that that there is no shear stress is being offered because as the shear strain or du y du or du y dy is being increased there is no change in the shear stress so still shear stress is zero if we uh, repeat the same experiment uh, where uh, a force is applied on the plate and this plate will continue to accelerate because no shear stress has been developed uh, within this in, uh, viscid fluid to offer a frictional resistance at the bottom of the plate now 
so we can precisely say that any fluid that has a viscosity is zero that will be called as inviscid fluid now what is ideal fluid uh, so any fluid which is inviscid inviscid fluid plus if that fluid is incompressible that will be categorized into the ideal fluid so in other way words you can say any incompressible inviscid fluid will be called as ideal fluid now we'll uh, move for the pressure and temperature effect on the viscosity uh, it has been noted that as the pressure applied on a fluid is being increased the viscosity of that fluid is also increases however the change in the viscosity with respect to applied fluid is very low so for the practical reason we can consider that there is no effect of the pressure uh, on the viscosity of the fluid so generally we can neglect it however temperature has a very great effect that we will discuss so in case of the uh, liquids if the temperature rises if the temperature rises the viscosity of the fluid decreases so uh, this has happened because as the temperature uh, increases this will lead to the uh, uh, more vibration or the mobility of the molecules of the liquid and thus this will lead to the breaking their molecular bonds and allowing the layer of the liquid to uh, loosen up and slip more easily so uh, and that's how the uh, viscosity of the liquid will decrease with the increase in the temperature so we can uh, summarize the statement i just wrote, i just discussed so as temperature rises the uh, mobility of mobility or uh, you can say vibration of the molecule and of the molecules increases increases and that they are uh, their molecular bonds are breaking bonds are breaking and thus they are more free to move because uh, uh, this will loosen up so the liquid layer can move to each other so the liquid layers can more move more easily however interestingly if the temperature rises in the case of gas if we take the example of gas if the temperature rises the viscosity of the uh, gases will also increase if we, if we want to elaborate why it is happening so in case of the gases molecules are very far apart and once they are very far apart the molecular bond between uh, these two is very weak so you can say that uh, uh, such uh, for, i mean you can say molecular attraction is very low in gases however once you increase the uh, temperature the motion of the mole uh, gas molecules will keep on increasing and once the molecules moves at a faster speed there will be a good amount of moment exchange between the successive layer so whenever the temperature increases the molecular motion of gas this will increase the momentum exchange between the successive layer and this additional resistance developed by the molecular collision will cause the uh, viscosity of the gases to increase so this will increase the resistance 
resistance among the uh, successive layers and this will lead to increase in the viscosity of the gas. So based upon the experimental data, empirical equations which were uh, derived by curve fitting of the experimental data, the variation of the viscosity with respect to temperature can be written by using these two very popular equations where first equation which was uh, devised by the Andrade's equation uh, which is uh, used for the liquids where mu is equal to B times of E raised to the power C by T and for the uh, gases the Sutherland equation which can be written as mu is equal to B multiplied by T raised to the power 3 by 2 divided by T plus C. So here uh, B and C are the constants which can be quickly find out if we the specific values of mu are uh, known for the two uh, different temperatures. So using uh, equations we can quickly find out the B value of B and C these are the constant. However, T is your temperature and this temperature uh, we uh, use in absolute temperature for the use of this equation. So that is your absolute temperature. So uh, that's all for the uh, uh, this uh, consideration of the effect of pressure and uh, temperature effect. Now uh, let's move to the uh, last discussion of our uh, today's lecture that is uh, kinematic viscosity. So the kinematic viscosity can be defined as the uh, ratio of the uh, dynamic viscosity to its density. So dynamic viscosity we represent as mu and let's say its density is rho. So the kinematic viscosity mu can be written as mu over uh, rho. So its unit. So let's uh, find out the uh, unit uh, SI unit of the kinematic viscosity uh, that will be uh, we are known that uh, that this the SI unit of this is Newton second per meter square Newton second per meter square is the SI unit for the mu and for the rho this is kilogram per meter cube. So if we simplify this will be look like so we have just uh, expanded the uh, dimension of the new uh, Newton that is uh, kilogram meter per second square mass into acceleration multiplied by cent, uh, seconds divided by meter square multiplied by meter cube and divided by kg and that will meter square second. So the SI unit of the uh, kinematic viscosity is meter square second. Now important thing is that uh, why it is called as uh, a term uh, kinematic because uh, in order to describe this particular property we are not using any kind of involvement of force. So there is no involvement of force force that is why we are describing this thing as a kinematic viscosity. So in uh, today's uh, lecture we have discussed the uh, meaning of viscosity how this what exactly viscosity uh, denotes and why the assessment of the viscosity of the fluid should be done and then we discuss the physical cause of viscosity after that we have discussed the newton's law of viscosity After that we have based upon the uh, proposed Newton's law we have discussed uh, how we can assess the shear stress in the fluid as well as the shear strain rate as well as the velocity gradient velocity gradient and based upon this particular law 
we have uh, we have typically divided our uh, fluids in the newtonian fluid and non newtonian fluid in fluids and non newtonian fluids and at the last we have discussed the temperature and pressure effect on the viscosity of the fluids where we have uh, shown two uh, empirical equations empirical equations which we can use or one can use in order to assess the viscosity of uh, gases as well as the liquid with the change in the temperature at the last we have discussed the kinematic viscosity of the fluid so that's all for today's lecture if you have any queries you can always drop your uh, queries in the comment section uh, i'll try my best to answer you that's all thank you